Hello, my name's David Jones from Capital.com, and I thought it would be interesting to do a video really based on the, the 20 years of experience I've had working in the trading business and trading for myself, and really picking out of that the five most important lessons I've learned. So whether you're just starting trading or you've been trading for a while and you're finding it difficult, I'm hoping that, that some of the points, uh, at least some of the points in this video, uh, will maybe help you help set you in a different and, uh, and better direction. As usual, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, if you can click on subscribe, support the channel, and we'll continue to push out uh, lots of what I hope is interesting content like this in the months ahead. So let's get into the first point. Now, you might think this is an odd one, particularly as I'm here talking from a trading company, Capital.com, but I think one really good idea is not to be too short term. I think the temptation is in this day and age, we have so much real time information at our fingertips on our phones. Markets are 24 hours. There's always something moving, always something flashing. But the fact of the matter is a lot of market moves are just noise. So if you're trying to figure out where's the market going to go know, in the next two minutes, five minutes, half an hour, um, chances are you'll find it really frustrating as the market's just chopping about and you might end up with a bunch of losing trades. So I think we can do it all do ourselves a favor uh, and take a step back and use a higher term time frame. So if you're sitting there looking at five minute charts, try looking at 30 minute or hourly charts. If you're looking at hourly charts, take a step back, go to the next time frame up, a four hour chart or even uh, a daily chart. The idea here is to try and look at, at, at the bigger picture, even if you're only going to run the trade over hours and maybe maybe a few days, perhaps even a few weeks, but it's to not miss out on the major market moves. I think it means you can end up trading less, which is never a bad thing, but perhaps you'll lock yourself into more profitable moves. Let me show you what I mean. Here's, here's one example of perhaps being too short term. This is, a, I think it's a 24 hour chart of oil. And what we're looking at here is five minute candles. And you can see the price has sold off. The oil price has dropped from $39 down to $37.57. It's June the 29th. Um, so you might be tempted to sell short. Let's take a step out. Let's change this to a higher time frame. But if we take this out to the higher level, the point we were looking at just here, you can actually see going back over the last week, there was lots of support coming in um, in the low $37. So when the price was slipping down towards 37, if we look at a higher time frame, we may well have identified it as a lower risk point to buy rather than a short sell based on the five minute charts. So that's one example I think where taking a step back can really help. The second point I think is one that, that is talked about an awful lot and it's really important and it's all to do with risk management. Take small risks. And it really means whatever your account size, whether it's a uh, hundred dollars or three million pounds, don't risk a large portion of your account on any one trading idea. Because of course the problem is, um, if you're risking 30% of your account on whether uh, the euro falls in the next uh, two hours, if you end up being wrong, um, you have to get back more than a 30% on the balance that's left. And the reality is you're going to be wrong probably um, a lot more than you first expect when you first start trading. I think, as we all know, if you've paper traded and then start trading with real money, it is uh, very different psychologically. So we want to play a very good defensive game here when it comes to managing risk. And if you miss an opportunity, don't chase the market. Don't take on additional risk and try and chase the market. There's always another opportunity another trade around the corner. Let's jump on the platform and I'll show you an example of bad risk management. So here's an example of taking too much risk. I've, I've picked up the S&P 500. So at the moment uh, in my account, this is the account I use for all the other trades that we do on the videos. I've got £6,600 available. I could trade 50 contracts of the S&P, tie up £6,200 margin. I'll put my stop loss actually near the day before's low. So it's not a million miles away, down at 30, 20. I could do this trade, but I'm risking losing, if I'm wrong, £2,200, which is pretty much, what, 20% of my account on one trading idea. If I end up getting stopped out and losing, I've got to make uh, 20 more than 20% again just to get back to where I was before this losing trade. So the lesson here is just because you can use leverage to take larger risks, that doesn't mean you you should. You know, leverage used sensibly is a useful tool, but just risk small amounts when trading. 
Point number three, uh, popular market cliche, trade with the trend. If you've watched uh, the other videos uh, that I do for capital, uh, of gold, oil, the S&P, all these different markets that we cover, uh, there's a constant theme and it's all about well, which way is the trend at the moment. And trends can persist for much longer than we expect. At the time of recording in 2020, there have been some incredible trends in stock markets and, and other markets as well. Perhaps one of the more extreme trends was that one uh, in oil. We saw oil slide and actually go negative, go below uh, zero for the May contract uh, in, in April uh, for oil. So we do, you do get incredibly persistent trends in markets, again, over different timeframes. And I think we can try and put the odds in our favor by trading with that trend in our chosen timeframe. I think it's part of human nature to try and pick tops and bottoms um, in the market. We see a market that's going up and we want to sell, see a market that's falling and we want to buy. Uh, trading with a trend is, I think, much less stressful. And if you're trying to pick a top or bottom, what are the chances that you pick the exact turning point? Highly unlikely. Let me show you uh, what I mean by trends. Now, I've gone with, admittedly, something of an extreme example when it comes to trend. But this is this is the chart of, of Palladium. This was a great trend. Uh, and even if we didn't pick it up until late 2018, when it broke out to fresh highs again, there was still plenty of room left in this trend, even going back to October 2019. The price still rose by about another 50, 60% from where it is now, show it where it was then, showing the power of that trend. Of course, most trends aren't that extreme, but here's a pound US dollar chart. It's an hourly chart from uh, the last six weeks or so. And you can see there are trends, even on this hourly chart, that persist for a couple of weeks at a time that give us plenty of trading opportunities. So that's why I say I think it's more profitable to try and trade with the trend the fourth point ties in uh, with risk and also reward as well, profitability as well. And it's all about running your winners and uh, cutting your losses. There was a study done about uh, nine years ago, I think it was now, on a, on a trading company's uh, clients and the trades they did. And it turned out that actually, out of millions of trades carried out for this study, more than 50% of the trades ended up being profitable. So it showed that they were actually not too bad at picking the direction of the market. But where most of these traders ended up losers was that their losses were bigger uh, than their profits. From memory, if the average uh, profit was uh, £100, then the average loss was nearly £200. So you don't need to be a mathematical genius to figure out, um, even if you're right 60% of the time, if your average loser is twice uh, your average winner, uh, you're not going to be profitable. So when you're putting a trade on, think about the potential reward uh, versus uh, the risk you're willing to take. Uh, There's an easy way of doing this. Let's jump on the charts and take a look. It's important to think about this idea of risk versus reward. And I think it's, it's, it's quite simple to do. If we're, we're looking here at a chart of uh, euro, US dollar, it's an hourly chart. Let's say we've seen the market uh, trade down to the 111.70 area and then run up towards 113.60. With it trading now around about 112, we could take a view, well, we're going to have a stop loss perhaps 50, 60 points away from where the market is trading now. So somewhere below the lows of the previous day on this chart, we want to be a buyer. And our target may be for a run back up to the highs from the previous day up around 113.50. So we've got about 140 points potential in that trade. For 50 or 60 points risk means our risk reward, uh, our reward versus risk is two to one in this example. So it can help us try and figure out is a trade actually worth doing and try and put ourselves in a position where our winners will be potentially much bigger than our losers, not the other way around. The final point, uh, I've, I've called it less is more. Uh, when it comes to point number five. These days with uh, trading platforms and trading apps so sophisticated, you can add tens, if not hundreds of different indicators to your charts. So you can have moving averages, Bollinger Bands, MACDs, RSIs, and all this other wonderful stuff. But I think you can end up with what is referred to as analysis paralysis, where half of it says buy, half of it says sell, and you don't really know what to do. And I think I think in a situation like this, you end up where you can't really see the wood for the trees. You've got so many indicators you're watching that you miss what the market is actually doing. So I'm a big fan of initially at least 
focusing on price action. So start off with a clean chart. Let's jump back on the platform and I'll show you what I mean. So here's an example of an extreme chart. This is this is the gold chart. So we have an RSI and a MACD down here, then a whole load of stuff, uh, Bollinger Bands, moving averages, Ishimoku charts, uh, and a few other things uh, on the on the price here. But you can see, I think that it can obscure exactly what's happening uh, with the price. If we if we take some of these off and actually take all of these off, then it's clear the trend of gold has been up since those since those March lows. At the time of recording, it's just set. Uh, new highs today for this recovery. So for me, looking at the price action is looking at a clean chart and trying to figure out, well, where's the momentum, the trend in the market? And then perhaps think about adding just one or two indicators if you want to help for timing. But for many traders, uh, price action is enough. That's it for this video on uh, five important, what I think are very important trading lessons. I hope you found it useful. We're going to wrap things up there. So for me, David Jones and Capital.com, Good luck with your trading. For more trading videos just like this, please subscribe to our channel.